my name is Bob Osborne. I am owner of Cornhill Nursery, which is located in southeastern New Brunswick, approximately 45 minutes west of Moncton. It started out as, uh, <clears throat> I thought I was going to be a teacher when I was young, but I saw my father aging and so forth, and he led a sort of sedentary life as a teacher, and I wanted to be outside, I wanted to make things. So I got into furniture making uh, when I moved to New Brunswick, and I did that for about 10 years. And then I got interested in grafting apple trees, and that, that just consumed me. I became obsessed, really. My dad had moved to this, this site in Corn Hill in 1974 to be near us, and what I couldn't get over was the soil and the aspect. We are facing south-southeast, we are at the top of the watershed. It's a soft, broken shale. It's extremely nutrient-rich, uh, drains well. Everything about the place appealed to me. And so I started to graft some apples. I think my first crop was 42 grafted apples or whatever. And so over the years, uh, it has gotten larger. We have about 60 acres in some sort of cultivation. Trees, shrubs, roses, uh, perennials, etc. Uh, plus uh, quite a few acres of containerized material. And uh, in the year 2000, uh, we built a store and cafe. My name is Melissa Price. We are outside of the beautiful Cedar Cafe. I worked here at the pizza oven at Cornhill Nursery for three years, and it's been an incredible experience. Learned a lot, made a lot of fires, made a lot of pizzas. Watching customers come down those stairs, and the, the minute they lay eyes on this place, it's the same reaction. It takes their breath away. It doesn't matter their age, their demographic, their walk of life, everyone who comes down here feels like they've stumbled across something special. Now where are we? Um, we are in, uh, under I should say, a Froberg weeping spruce. This is a type of Norway spruce and what we have done here is to clean up the dead inside stem so that nobody gets to have their eye poked out uh, and it just reveals this incredible sinuous uh, structure uh, of the weeping tree. It's sort of, it's upright enough to grow up, but all the branchlets hang down and it gives you this uh, fort-like feel underneath it. This is about, I think around 30 years old. So it's grown quite rapidly. It's not a small plant, but it uh, is quite incredible. And uh, you have like a, you know, a, a small sized, uh tree of this kind to, to sell to somebody? <laughs> yeah, or? I mean, we, we basically graft these, and right now we're actually, all I have are just the new grafts, so it's got, they're going to have to wait a year or two before uh, they're saleable, but uh, uh, we're about the only one uh, that I know of that propagates this tree, so I have to just rely on my own grafting to, uh, to produce new plants. So. Well, a nursery is a production uh, it is a propagation uh, and of material from either a cutting, a uh, graft, or whatever. So this is a rose cutting for propagation purposes. And we've cut it off the plant. The, the side branches, if they're vigorous, are what we are looking for. And uh, what we will take off the buds on the top that are going to be flowers because we want all of the energy in here to be pushed into vegetative growth. We don't want flowers. So we'll be cutting this up into two sections and dipping it in hormone and placing it in sand. When things begin to happen in the cutting, they will form what's called a cow. So you'll have kind of like a little knob forming on the base of the cutting. And that is not actually the roots themselves, but that uh, sort of is, is the beginning of the rooting process. And then the roots will come out from the stem at the base. People 
come for plant material. They come for the restaurant. Um, sometimes they'll come for the art show that we have in the summertime. Some people are come in and they're crazy about apple trees. The next person might love roses or flowers. Some people get out of the car and the first thing they notice is the beautiful valley and scenery behind me. We give uh, information, which is much more valuable in a sense than the plant. Because you can buy a plant from any, any nursery source, right? And if it's a healthy plant, it should grow well, right? But uh, we give information on the type of soils that that plant needs, what the pH should be in that soil for best growth. Soil is us, or we are soil would be a better way to put it. Uh, everything that we depend on for food and so forth comes from the soil. We tend to think of it just as something you stick your plant in and somehow it grows, but it's so complex. There is an incredible diversity of life in soil. So you have nematodes and amoebas and all the things that you can't see, uh, but are there by the billions and trillions in soil. You can see, all right, there's a couple of different species. That's probably a honeybee there, but they're little tiny bees. Almost every flower that is, uh, has just opened has the, the pollen on the stamens here. We're finding too that uh, people starting to change their opinion about what a lawn means. You know, I, we've grown up with an image of the the British estate lawn, right? And um, it's a bit like a desert, pollinator-wise and and so forth. There's no diversity there. My lawn here, it's got clover, uh, plantain, dandelions. It's like it's just a it's a green, diverse world. And so it's very healthy, you know, I don't have to worry about bugs in it or anything. And, you know, people are always asking, you know, how to kill this and how to kill that. And, and I'm like, feed your lawn, right? Give it compost, good. Uh, more it helps the, the natural world. We are in the process right now of succession. It will be going to my daughter and son-in-law, who have been involved for decades. You know, what we built here, we just don't want to see collapse, and it's a great lifestyle for the kids. You know, my, I've got like a billion grandchildren, and it's a super place to grow up, right? You want to make sure that that doesn't, isn't taken away from them. When I was young, um, down in this area here, Bob had laid out where these cedar trees were going to go and asked me to plant them for him and they were not even knee high and they were so small and I thought to myself they're never ever going to do anything in my lifetime what's even thinking about planting some, something so small and I got on my hands and knees and dug holes and planted them and now all these years later they're like towering big trees which kind of makes me feel old uh, but also proud at the same time and um, I, I can't wait to see how big they actually get in the future. You give people joy. And for me, that's the essence of what I wanted a business to do because I think it's the most valuable product to all, product in question, is that if you can give people joy, it makes their lives easier. Uh, it, you know, and you are, you're providing them too with the kind of product that gets better with time. And there's always a challenge, yes, but there's always a, a pleasurable moment too. And you know, you, you, you do have to stop and smell the roses, not just propagate them, and think about you know, where you are, how lucky we are. I mean, I feel, I feel like I'm a, one of the luckiest people ever lived.